Hey, how you doing? My name is Emilio. Today we're going to be talking about my top 10 recommendations, my top 10 tips to speed up your Mac OS running Big Sur. We're going to talk about that today. As always, remember to subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, clicking on the bell to be kept up to date with everything that is going on. All right, so you've got Big Sur, it is running on your Mac, and perhaps over time, your Mac is starting to run a little bit slow. It's not a good thing when your Mac starts to run slow, especially when it was running super, super fast when you first got it or when you first installed Big Sur. We're gonna be covering 10 recommendations, 10 ways to make your Mac run faster. Uh, these may not all work for you. Some of them may work. You may see a gradual improvement. Some you may see a very significant improvement to your Mac. So try them out. They could work for you. They've worked for me. They've worked for a lot of other people that I know who have sort of implemented some of these. We're gonna now cross over to my Mac that is running Big Sur, and we're gonna cover those 10 tips. All right, so here we are logged into our Mac. Now, we are gonna be talking about our top 10 tips to speed up your Mac, but we do have a little bonus one at the very, very end that will help you and make things a little bit easier. So do stick till the end of the video for that little bonus item. Number one being first aid or disk utility. So right here on our computer in Big Sur, if you go into the spotlight area and type in disk, uh, it'll open up this application right here called disk utility. Essential Disk Utility lets you do a whole bunch of stuff around formatting hard drives, um, creating partitions, things like that. But there's also first aid. Now doing a first aid across your hard drives quite regularly does ensure that it is that the hard drives are kept clean, that any redundant data is removed, that any issues, errors on the disks themselves are also fixed. So what I would do is right here, I've got my uh, hard drive that is built into my computer. This is my SSD. 256 uh, gig SSD on my Mac. You'll have obviously a different size if you have a different Mac. And then I've also got my external hard drive right here, but I'm gonna select my hard drive, which is on my Mac and select first aid. It's going to check for disk errors uh, and we'll repair the disk if necessary. So you've got a whole list of all the stuff that essentially it's done and everything appears to be okay. Yours may come up with errors and if it does, it'll go and fix them. But I generally recommend running this probably once a month, going in and actually running it against all of your hard drives. I'm just gonna do my second hard drive right here. This is a bigger hard drive and it's gone through and completed. Number two is to clear your login items. So essentially when your Mac starts up, when it boots up in the, you know, when you turn it on, uh, there's a whole bunch of applications that start up in the background. Some of them you may not even know that are starting up in the background. You can easily find where these are by going into system preferences. So in your little Apple logo, going into system preferences, and we wanna go and select this icon right here called users and groups. In here, you've got a list of all of the users on your Mac. Now, because I'm the only user on my Mac, I've only got my Emilio profile. If you have more than one, they're all gonna show up on here. So what we're gonna do right here is we're going to uh, run cleanup of the login items against each user account. So let's just go and unlock it so you can actually make changes. So let's just select login items. And here are a list of items that will open automatically when you log in. All of these apps are actually going to start and are gonna be running in the background when I start up my Mac. So if there are things in here that you don't want to start up, remove them. Select, for example, Google Chrome. I don't want that. Click on the little minus. Microsoft Outlook. I don't want that to start up. I don't want Chess and I don't want TV. I do want Dropbox and OneDrive because they obviously keep my files in sync up to the cloud. So I'm going to keep those two. Now, one of the greatest things being number three here is our Activity Monitor. We're just going to open up Activity Monitor by clicking on our spotlight up the top again and typing in Activity. What this is, is essentially a uh, summary of all of the processes that are running on your Mac uh, and showing you how much resources these applications are using or these processes are using against CPU, memory, energy, disk, and network. So right from here, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. You've got a summary of all of the processes. This is all the stuff that is running on your computer. Now, I recommend going into here quite regularly, especially if your computer is running slow, there could be a process that is chewing up all of your resources. You've got a little percentage here. So you can sort it by clicking on percentage CPU and you can see straight away 
what applications or what processes are taking up the most amount of CPU at the moment. So you can see it right here, I've got kernel, you've got Windows Server, uh, I've also got you know QuickTime, Activity Monitor, these are obviously open, but this is the percentage of CPU that that particular process is taking up. For example, you've got Microsoft Teams, okay? To give you an example, I can now click on this little cross right here and that will stop that process, we'll quit it, and now that particular process is now going to be removed. The same thing with CPU, you've got memory, giving you an indication of all of the apps sorted by how many bytes of memory is an application actually taking up. And there it is, that's how it's sorted. And you can see that some apps actually do consume quite a bit of memory. Now in my case, uh, I know how much memory I've got. I've got 16 gig worth of memory. And right in the bottom, you can see memory used is nine gig. So if you are nearing the full capacity, if you've got you know eight gig of RAM and your memory is at seven or eight, there's a very good chance that the application uh, is potentially causing your computer to run slow because you don't have enough RAM. You can also see other things around energy disk network. Perhaps networking is an issue. Uh, there could be slow performance on your network, maybe copying files from one computer to another or over to the internet and back. But this is brilliant. Uh, it's almost one of the best things that you could do on your Mac to try to identify why is it running slow. What I recommend on top of just checking this, keep your Mac clean. Right, go into your applications under your finder and actually go and remove apps that you don't need. So if you don't need a specific application, uninstall it, remove it. If you don't have, uh, if there's files that you don't need, that you don't uh, need have, have use for anymore, remove those files, remove files and data you don't need. Try to keep your hard drive as light as possible. Now, especially this is true if you don't have an SSD hard drive on your computer. If you have a hard drive that has like a spinning disk inside of it, which is like a SATA disk, um, then that can start to get cluttered and there's fragmentation and things like that uh, that can cause the hard drive to be slower. Good practice, keeping your hard drive clean, your computer clean, remove apps, remove files that you don't need. On your desktop, keep your desktop clean. When you have icons on your desktop, every time your computer starts up, these things are sort of there. They have to load information, little icon, preview, things like that. So remove stuff from your desktop if you don't need it to be on there. Put it into folders, into stacks uh, instead. Number four is to clear your browser history, your cache, uh, when you're not actually using it. So I've got two different browsers on here, Chrome and on Safari. Within any browser, the more and more you use that browser, the more and more cache or cache is stored, saved files, history is all stored on your browser. So it can start to run sluggish after time. So getting into a habit within Google Chrome here itself, clicking on the little Chrome at the very top, you can go into preferences, you can go down to clear browsing data right here. And uh, you can do a few things. You can do time range. Do you want all of your data to be removed or only the last hour? I recommend doing all time, making sure these are all ticked. And then under the advanced tab, you've got a whole bunch of other things in here. Site settings, you know, try ticking on that as well. So everything that's on here, cache, cache, passwords, uh, save data, browsing history, downloaded history, uh, let's clear the whole lot. There's also a little shortcut by clicking on the Chrome icon and saying clear browsing data. In Safari, similarly in here, you've got Safari, you've got preferences, you also got clear history, clear history just does it right now. Under preferences, couple of things under the general tab, remove history items after one year, after one month, after one day. That's a good one, after one day. And then remove download list after one day as well, or when Safari quits. So we're gonna say when Safari quits. So every time it quits, that's gonna go away. Something else that can be useful is other than the history and the cache and things like that, is looking at what extensions you've got. These are essentially little add-ons, little plugins to your browser. They can slow things down. Going into extensions here on Safari, removing things that you don't need. If you need them, keep them. If you don't need them, remove them. And also within Chrome, you've got extensions in here and you can remove things that you don't actually need. Now that's Google Chrome and that's Safari, of course, Firefox and other browsers will be similar, but just get into that good habit of keeping your browsers clean. Number five is to reduce visual effects. So if you've got a Mac, you find that they're awesome to play with. They've got really nice effects that are built in as well. One perfect example is right here with system preferences open. Uh, if I just minimize this right here, you'll see, see that nice little cool animation that just happened? That's a effect that is using resources from your computer. If you look at my dock, this little genie effect, right, where the icons just get bigger and bigger and smaller and smaller, 
is an effect. Uh, the, the dock auto hiding up and back, up and back, up and back, that is an effect or to some extent it's an effect. So all of these things require resources from your computer. You can go and uh, adjust these or turn them off and then you may see a slight performance improvement. Under system preferences, go into dock and menu bar. You've got the size of your dock, your magnification, we're gonna untick that. So now by having it unticked, that is now gone. And under minimize windows, remember this little cool effect here, we want to say scale effect. The other option is automatically hide and show the dock, all right? We have that on, all right? You can see it on and off. I like to generally have my dock on all the time. So look at reducing some of those effects. Number six, look at clearing your cache or your cache. This is essentially files that are stored on your computer over time. And there are two primary locations where this is stored and can be removed. Now we'll mention that before you go and start deleting all of your cache, uh, just be aware that by removing some of this stuff, your applications may sort of reset uh, maybe some customizations and preferences that you've set up, more just the preference settings of applications and things like that. If we go to the very top and go to go and then select go to folder, forward slash library. And from within here, I've got caches right here. What you need to do is select these and delete them. Okay, I'm gonna move them to my bin. It's gonna ask you for your password. And then potentially it may ask you to also reboot your computer. It'll unlock those files so that you can then remove them when you do reboot. The other area is again going into go, add the tilde symbol on the very front. So this is located next to the one, uh, just above the tab, holding down shift, forward slash library and say go. You'll have a different set of caches listed. And then like the other one, we're gonna go and select all of them. And then we're gonna move them to our bin. It's a good practice that once you have removed your cache, uh, give your computer a reboot. Number seven is to look at uh, resetting your spotlight, re-indexing your spotlight. So spotlight is your little uh, thing up here. This is spotlight, spotlight search. Now what spotlight does, of course you go in and you type in something. We've did it before, we did disk utility. It, uh, it knows where disk utility is. It does a simple search against your computer and goes, ah, there it is, opens it up. So sometimes that can get stuck. Uh, sometimes the search setting can get stuck or some things can be very slow and there could be problems in your search indexing. Re-indexing Spotlight could help. Now the way that we do this is we go back into our system preferences right here. We're gonna select Spotlight. We're gonna select Privacy. We're gonna grab our hard drive. So our hard drive, this is everything. Everything is stored in here. Grab it, drag it into there. Are you sure you want to prevent Spotlight from searching your hard drive? So we say, okay. What that's now gonna do is that's gonna stop Spotlight search against that hard drive. Now stopped. So now if you go and search for something, like I've got some project files, nothing's really coming up. I've just got some basic uh, suggestions and some web lookups, um, but my files don't show up because it's no longer discovering these via Spotlight. So then all you do is you then grab it and we wanna now remove it. And now Spotlight is going to now start to re-index. Now, because you're doing this essentially for the first time now, Spotlight is going, oh, I've got all these files, I need to go search all over your hard drive. Your Mac could run a little bit slower while this process is taking place. Number eight, you may need to look at getting your hardware upgraded. Looking at improving your hard drive and your RAM on your computer. Now, as I said before, I am running an SSD hard drive. If you're not running an SSD hard drive, you're running an older SATA hard drive, look at upgrading that hard drive. Do you have enough RAM? Perhaps your Mac doesn't have enough RAM and you need to get some additional RAM to make it run a little bit faster. Now you can find your hard drive and your RAM information by clicking in the top left-hand corner under the um, little Apple logo and saying about this Mac, Right there, you'll see that my memory says 16 gig, okay, and that's the speed. If you select storage, you'll see that mine says flash storage. Now, if yours does not say flash storage, or if you've got uh, RAM that you may need to want to look at increasing it, the best thing you can do is take your Mac perhaps to an Apple store, and they will easily be able to tell you whether your Mac can get more RAM. If it can, great. And they'll also tell you whether you can look at upgrading your hard drive from perhaps a slower hard drive to a flash-based hard drive. Of course, you may need to look at getting all your data transferred over, but they are two things that I recommend doing. Upgrade your hard drive and upgrade your RAM. 
Number nine is potentially creating yourself a new user profile. If you've done all of these software tricks, you've removed stuff, you've cleaned things up, you've cleaned your disk, uh, there could be a corruption or an issue on your user profile that is making it run slow. Over time, uh, your, your computer could just collect a lot of junk over time, which will sort of make it run a little bit slower. If we go into system preferences again, up the top, and we select user and groups, We've got my particular user profile, which is right here being Emilio Admin. Gonna unlock it. And of course, this is my profile. This is the profile that I'm using for all of my stuff. Now, the best thing you could do is uh, create a brand new profile. So click on the little plus right here, and it's gonna ask you to create a brand new account. We can give the account the same level of permissions, potentially an admin, which mine is an admin. We're gonna call it Emilio2, create user. So a brand new profile, user profile has just been created called Emilio2 Admin. I can now log out and log back in under this. Now you'll probably see straight away that Emilio2 runs a lot better than Emilio1, the original Emilio. And that's because Emilio2 is brand new, there's nothing in it. Uh, so then what you can need to do is you need to start then transferring your data over. Start copying the data from one profile to the other uh, and you'll find that that, that will improve things. Um, remembering that by creating a brand new profile, you're essentially removing all of your config and settings and the way that your Emilio profile was configured. Uh, so you have to redo that again, but that's another good option for you to try. And number 10 is a couple of awesome commands that you can run from time to time to reset some further settings on the backend system of your Mac. The first being an SMC, the second being a PRAM. Essentially resetting the SMC is only really valid for laptops. Uh, so if you've got a MacBook, MacBook Pro, uh, MacBook Air, you can run an SMC. Uh, you can also then run a PRAM against other computers to go and do some further changes. Essentially what you do is you have your Mac powered off, you then power it on, you grab your keyboard, and then you hold a specific set of keys. Now for a SMC, you hold down the Shift Control Option key on your keyboard while you are powering your Mac on. You keep holding those down and that will go do a whole bunch of stuff. Hold it down long enough, your Mac will do some reboots, there could be some noises, and that is resetting the SMC. The other one is resetting the PRAM, which is a Command Option P and R, holding those four turning on your Mac, similar to the SMC, will be resetting that PRAM. Doing these from time to time does clear out some settings and some config stuff in the back end, in the system settings essentially on the Mac, which are good to do, and you could see a little bit of an improvement. So they are my top 10. I did say that there was a little bonus one, and that is an app that I use and I use regularly to help with all cleanup on my Mac, and that is an app called Clean My Mac. Right up here in my dashboard at the very top, I've got uh, Clean My Mac running. Right off the bat, I can see a whole bunch of settings, config info around my Mac. I can open it up, and some of the stuff that we talked about today can be done on here, but this even picks up stuff that we didn't even cover today, which makes it even, even better. So you can go into Clean My Mac and do a scan. It'll scan your entire computer and pick up all of these files and then essentially ask you whether you want to remove them or what you want to do with that uh, with those apps. Does stuff like system junk, mail attachments, empties your trash bins, there's malware removals, there's privacy, there's a proper uninstaller. So sometimes on the Mac just removing an application isn't good enough because there's stuff saved in the library and all these other sort of backend system settings. Optimization, there's maintenance, awesome, awesome app. You can get Clean My Mac, you can even trial it for free, but you can get it from a link in my description. As I said, it's an app that I've been using for multiple, multiple years, but I go into this almost on a daily basis to sort of see the health of my Mac and clean it up and make sure that it's always running at its optimal speed. But that were the top 10 steps, including a little bonus there for Clean My Mac uh, to hopefully find your computer running a little bit faster. Hopefully some of these work for you. Comment below, let me know your thoughts. Please like my video. And as always, remember to subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. My name is Emilio again. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.